Herod himself had sent men who arrested John, bound him, and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him, but she could not, for Herod feared John, knowing that John was a righteous and holy man, and he protected him. When Herod heard John, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod on his birthday gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guests. And the king said to the girl, Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it. And he solemnly swore to her, Whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What should I ask for? She replied, The head of John the Baptist. Immediately she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was deeply grieved. Yet out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. The soldier went and beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took John's body and laid it in a tomb. This passage from the Gospel of Mark 6, 17-29 recounts a tragic moment that reveals the intricate and perilous interplay of power, pride, fear, and righteousness. It is a stark portrayal of the consequences of moral compromise and the destructive nature of holding on to grudges. Herod Antipas is a man caught between two worlds, the world of righteousness embodied by John the Baptist and the world of political maneuvering, self-indulgence, and fear of losing face. Herod's fascination with John is evident he recognizes John as a righteous and holy man and is drawn to his teachings, finding them perplexing yet compelling. This tension in Herod represents a spiritual struggle that many of us can relate to, the attraction to truth and goodness, even when it challenges our own choices and way of life. Herod's conscience is not entirely dead. He senses the moral weight of John's words and is aware of his own wrongdoing in taking his brother's wife. Yet, Herod is also held captive by his own desires and fears. Herodias, on the other hand, is consumed by hatred and a desire for vengeance. She symbolizes the hardness of heart that comes from refusing to acknowledge one's own sinfulness and the truth spoken by another. Herodias cannot bear John's condemnation because it pierces through the facade of her actions, exposing them to the light of divine law. Her insistence on John's death reveals how unchecked anger and resentment can corrupt the soul, leading to even greater sins. The dynamics of the banquet show the precariousness of Herod's moral position. His pride, combined with the intoxication of power and the need to impress his guests, leads him to make a rash and foolish promise. The banquet setting represents a place where moral clarity is clouded by sensuality and a desire to be seen as magnanimous and powerful. Herod's fear of losing face in front of his guest overrides his fear of God and his acknowledgement of John's righteousness. It is a reminder that moral decisions should never be made to please others or to maintain one's own image at the cost of justice and truth. The scene of Salome's dance and her request for John's head is both grotesque and deeply symbolic. It represents the extent to which human beings can go when they allow themselves to be instruments of others' malice and when they become disconnected from their own sense of right and wrong. Herod's grief after the request is granted shows a man trapped by his own words, a man who recognizes his sin yet lacks the courage to repent or change his course. This passage invites us to reflect on several key spiritual lessons. First, it challenges us to examine where we might be like Herod torn between the voice of truth and the allure of worldly power or approval. Do we allow fear of others' opinions to dictate our actions, even when we know what is right? Second, it calls us to consider how we handle righteous confrontation. Are we like Herodias, holding on to grudges and seeking to silence those who call us to holiness? Finally, it offers a sobering reflection on the cost of discipleship and the prophetic vocation. John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Christ, is martyred for speaking the truth, embodying the cost of standing up for God's law in a world that often resists it. Questions for spiritual growth. 1. Are there areas in my life where I am like Herod, 
drawn to the truth, but afraid to embrace it fully due to fear of losing status, reputation, or approval from others. Two, do I hold on to grudges or resentments like Herodias, allowing them to blind me to the truth or to the possibility of repentance and reconciliation? Three, when faced with moral dilemmas, do I prioritize my integrity and alignment with God's will, or do I find myself swayed by the opinions and expectations of others? Four, how can I develop the courage to speak the truth in love, like John the Baptist, even when it might lead to personal loss or conflict? Five, in what ways can I be more open to receiving difficult truths from others without immediately becoming defensive or retaliatory? Six, reflecting on John the Baptist's faithfulness to his mission, what areas of my own discipleship require commitment and willingness to sacrifice?